Okay, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to How to Audit Drupal Sites. Thank you all so much for coming. This is a fantastic audience. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Um, my name is John Peck. I'm a software architect at Four Kitchens, a digital agency based out of Austin, Texas. Uh, I can be found on the internet on a number of different places, including GitHub and uh, Drupal.org. Uh, i am uh, been working in Drupal for uh, quite a few years. I've worked on projects such as uh, the architecture of uh, Entertainment Weekly, People Magazine, uh, Successful Farming. I've done uh, performance work at a number of organizations, and uh, including time working at uh, uh, Pantheon as a senior customer success engineer. And among those responsibilities was uh, bringing people onto the platform and making sure that their sites were performant. And you can kind of probably see a little bit of where the genesis of this comes from. So what is an audit? Audits are more than just words. An audit is an official inspection of accounts. Uh, and an audit isn't necessarily a dirty word. It's where you can actually validate some of the good things that you're doing. It's good to be told that it's like what you've done is the right thing, or at least adheres to like something that people agree with. And also can highlight areas of improvement. You know, we're made of meat, we make mistakes. And uh, having something saying, oh, by the way, on this incredibly complex system with literally hundreds of thousands of uh, pieces of input, you missed one. Having something to actually say is like, hey, this is something that you can change. Or possibly, this is a little bit out of alignment. You may have done this completely on purpose, but you should be at least educated to uh, that this is out of the norm. So why should we do this? You know, uh, auditing sites, you do it for a number of reasons. Sometimes it's just purely performance. I wanted to make sure it's faster. Sometimes you want to learn about the content and the structure of the site uh, in kind of a normal way in saying, it's like, uh, you know, there's going to be, uh, I have these expectations around it. Uh, also ensuring optimal configuration, making sure that, you know, it's ready for production or it's you know, configured appropriately for a development environment, making sure that you're not, uh, you know, doing things that are, uh, uh, suboptimal and taking longer, uh, for example, um, and also, you know, again, to uh, find areas of improvement. So uh, within the context of Drupal, you know, we're all unique snowflakes. Every site is unique, but it's all built in the same framework. You know, so we're all using version of Drupal, you know, either six or seven or eight or five if you're glutton for punishment. Uh, but they all have similar architectural uh, requirements, uh, a LAMP or a LEMP stack, or you, know, you can use a PostgreSQL or MSQSQL. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty similar stack. And therefore, one size fits most. Uh, you know, it's like there's things that obviously there will be exceptions to the rule, but it's good to know that you know, for most cases, you know, this makes sense. So uh, there are a few hallmarks of you know, uh, effective auditing. You know, things such as providing consistent responses every time. Uh, you, know, you run a test and you expect to get the same results, like saying, OK, what color is the sky today? Blue. And if you run it just a second later, assuming nothing has changed, it, you're expected to be blue. If it says blue one time and the orange the second time and it hasn't actually changed, well, that's not really an effective audit. Um, it needs to be quantifiable. So um, you know, uh, something that's really frustrating, especially uh, you know, when you're trying to work on a site and someone says, uh, the site's slow. And that's it. And it's like, mic drop. OK, uh, what do I do with that? And well, how is it slow? Um, you know, it, it takes 10 seconds for the front page to load every time. Oh, OK, that's something I can actually work with. And, I, and, and that gives you a benchmark, something that you can improve upon. Uh, it should be contextually aware. You know, for example, it's like, uh, you know, this is a development environment. Uh, I'm not going to yell at you for having development modules enabled. This is a production environment. I am going to give you a hard time about it because it's not appropriate to have that kind of thing around. Uh, it should be easy to understand. Uh, don't baffle them with BS. Actually, like, you know, give them, you know, uh, you know, something that's clear and actionable. Like, you know, this is what you need to do. Uh, so. Uh, for example, caching is turned off. Explain that in plain language. I mean, yes, you can obfuscate it with like really fancy terms, but at the end of the day, caching's off. Say that. Um, and then finally, uh, provide actual recommendations. You know, this is what you need to do. Uh, no one likes to know that they've done something wrong, or uh, but they do want to know how to fix it. You know, if you just say it's like this is terrible, and then just leave it, 
nobody wins, nobody improves, and uh, why would you do that? So um, this is going to be kind of a tool-oriented approach because, uh, again, like in the context of Pantheon and, and just in general, like do, working on multiple sites at any given time, uh, I look for ways you know, to be efficient. And being efficient means you know, coming up with a repeatable process. You know, so uh, some of that is a tool-oriented approach. Uh, Jody of Zivtech has a fantastic, uh, you know, uh, version of auditing, uh, which is more content oriented and actually gets more into the semantic content into the IA of it. And uh, it's uh, you know, a fantastic presentation. She uh, did it at Bad Camp, and I highly recommend checking out that uh, presentation as well. So, with that said, uh, first tool that I'm going to talk about is Site Audit. Uh, this is an open source project. It's available on Drupal.org. Uh, and uh, it's a Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 site analyzer. Uh, looks for uh, you know, a number of, uh, you know, it looks at the content, it looks at the configuration, and it provides a report. Uh, in its current state, it's a Drush uh, command that runs on the target platform. It's not actually installed in the site itself. Uh, so uh, it, it can be, but it's kind of shoehorny, and it's not a module, so it's not something that you enable. Uh, and it's, uh, it powers launch check, uh, well, specifically launch check for Drupal on Pantheon. Uh, so what does it report on? Well, there's a number of different things. You know, things such as best practices, which is mostly kind of configuration kinds of things, like how is the site laid out? Have you uh, tried to mess around with the structure, putting sim links in weird places? You know, rather than like adhering to like the normal Drupal structure, which makes it harder to maintain and sometimes can introduce uh, performance problems. Uh, you know, looks at the block module. You know, is it enabled? Is caching enabled? Uh, what uh, what caches are available? How it's configured? And then the caching system itself. Uh, you know, such as what are the caching uh, cache backends that are being used? Uh, are you using uh, something that's inefficient? Uh, you know, if something like Redis is available and you're not actually using it, it'll give you a recommendation around that. Um, uh, the code base, uh, you know, certain kinds of uh, metrics such as, you know, how large it is, uh, you know, the size on disk, um, you know, some information about uh, the repositories that are contained within it. Uh, the content, uh, so it isn't doing semantic content analysis, but it is actually looking at the structure of it. So, you know, how many content types are there? Uh, you know, what are they? Uh, are they being used? Uh, what fields are there? Uh, if there's, uh, you know, if those fields are being used, do you have empty fields, uh, for example? Uh, also, uh, you know, that goes into uh, taxonomies and vocabularies as well. Uh, cron, so what cron runner you're, you're using, if any, uh, and uh, it'll make a recommendation, basically, you should be using some sort of cron. It doesn't have to be the poor man's cron that's built into Drupal, but you know, it should, that regularly scheduled process should be executed in some manner or another. Uh, it'll also tell you if it's stuck. Uh, so it'll also look at the database, like the number of tables that are uh, available, the size on disk. Uh, it'll give you, uh, you know, there are optional reports that will tell you, it's like any rows, uh, database tables that are over X number of rows. So if you want to say, show me all, all the database tables that have more than 100,000 rows, you know, that can give you kind of like uh, an idea of what, what some of the outliers may exist. Uh, the extensions, so that's uh, modules and themes, you know, the, what's enabled. Uh, it does a, a number of uh, interesting little checks for, um, in Drupal, you can't get away with this in Drupal 8, but in Drupal 7, uh, you can get into a situation where you enable a module, remove it from the code base. Uh, Drupal will still check it, uh, check for it until you actually uninstall it and tell it, no, this module no longer exists and, and actually puts uh, Drupal into a really kind of slow error state. It also checks for duplicate modules so um, that are outside of profiles. I mean, uh, having an installation profile with a module and uh, overriding it is normal, but say if you have uh, two copies of C tools in Sites All Modules, for example, it'll yell at you and say this is not a good idea. Uh, it is multi-site aware, so it should be smart enough not to uh, give you a hard time about that. Um, front end, so uh, it's not actually look uh, it doesn't directly look at the front end. It uh, integrates with uh, third-party services such as uh, webpagetest.org or uh, Google PageSpeed Insights. And uh, if the if the site is accessible from those, it can actually run those given, a, given an API key and uh, produce those results in a consistent format. Uh, security, so um, there is, uh, as uh, it's been pointed out, there is no 100% 
uh, perfect secure configuration and you should never look at a security report saying, yep, secures, it's done. But it, it, you can at least know a couple things are taken care of. For example, um, built into site audit is a, a check for uh, uh, malicious callbacks in the router, uh, routing system. You know, things like, uh, you know, exec, for example, that uh, basically would only exist if there was uh, either a very malicious or very incompetent entry that would allow arbitrary code ex execution on the system. Uh, system status, Drupal itself is actually really good at telling you what's wrong with it. Um, some modules are better than others about telling it, but Drupal core itself actually has this great system page. This uh, surfaces it uh, you know, in a consumable fashion. Uh, the users, so uh, basic information such as who is user number one, uh, who is number six, uh, you know, the, how many roles exist on the system, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, who has uh, elevated uh, uh, Elevated permissions, how many blocked users are there? You know, have you blocked user number one? Some people recommend that, other people don't. It's, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's not an error, it's just a kind of a statement of, yes, you've done this. Um, views, uh, so is views enabled? Okay, if so, uh, goes into views caching. So views has two different kinds of caching. There's the, uh, the render caching and the query caching, and uh, it'll make a recommendation. Uh, that's kind of contextually aware, so, uh, yeah. If uh, you know, it won't give you a hard time for admin views, but if it's just a regular view without views bulk operation, you should have some type of uh, query caching on it. Uh, and uh, the render caching actually sh should just be as long as possible because uh, as soon as the query changes, the render will update automatically. And then finally, watchdog. Do you have uh, you know, DB log enabled? How about syslog? Okay, well, DB log's enabled. I can actually look through the content and uh, see it's like, oh yeah, by the way, you filled that with a whole bunch of PHP errors. You should probably do something about that uh, rather than just ignore it or turn off DB log because it makes your site slow. Um, so site audit is not a panacea. It doesn't actually do everything. And if you're ever in San Francisco, this is a fantastic club. Uh, but anyway, uh, site audit uh, does not uh, check the usability or site experience. These are things that humans are really good at doing. Uh, there are tools that exist to help it. This is not one of them. Uh, it also doesn't care about the aesthetics of the site. You know, you can be gray on red with like flashing blink tags. It doesn't care. I don't care. You know, make a statement in whatever way you want possible. This is only looking at the configuration of the site. It's like if you want blink tags and you want to serve it as fast as possible, use site audit. Uh, also, uh, it doesn't check for semantic content, uh, and there's actually a few exceptions to that, but uh, not within site audit itself. So uh, it doesn't ca uh, care what language the content's in. Uh, it doesn't care. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't care what the subject matter is, and it, and it doesn't have a practical way of analyzing that. So site audit has a built-in manual because uh, nobody wants to ask questions. So drush help dash dash filter equals site audit will actually give you a list of all the available uh, reports and also like a high level overview of what each one, each one of them does. There's also uh, a convenient helper called audit all that just arbitrarily runs them all. Uh, so here's an example of a report. This is the audit cache report. And uh, you notice a few things about it. Like at, right at the very top, I mentioned having, uh, having it as a quantifiable thing. So right up front, it says Drupal's caching settings, 17%. So, uh, you know, uh, percentage is a, you know, scale of one to 100. People understand that it's like 17%. That's kind of bad. You actually kind of want that higher up. So right up front, you have a number. Each time you run this uh, report, you are going to get a number. And uh, that number can be used to uh, you know, determine success. Like, have I fixed this problem? Has that number gone up? Uh, next up is, uh, you know, it says anonymous caching. Anonymous caching is not enabled. That's a problem. So it's, it's done a check. It has a response to it. Uh, it's, it's an exceptional situation, and then it gives you the actionable recommendation outside that. Go, go to admin, config, development, performance, and check cache pages for anonymous users. Sure, you could set a variable, but this is the easiest path. This is the fastest way to success in this context. Um, and it has a couple more errors that are very similar. Uh, and notice that this only provides the, the list of what's wrong. Uh, in its default mode, it's uh, not verbose. Uh, the next version of it is the detail mode, where it actually will go through and, and tell you the things that are good in addition to the things are bad. You know, sometimes I just want to know what I need to do to fix it, 
And then other times, yeah, I want to be validated and know that these things are where, I, where they are. So dash dash detail uh, will give you that context. So for example, um, minimum cache lifetime, uh, you know, that's a, a minimum cache type time is set to null. Expiration of cache pages is not set. Oh, that's an exceptional situation. Once again, you get the recommendation. Uh, it'll also produce uh, JSON output, which is probably a little small on that screen. I apologize, but it is actually a bunch of nested data. Uh, the, the JSON output is actually uh, you know, really useful if you're writing tools that integrate with this. Uh, for example, LaunchCheck uses uh, the JSON output from this and, par uh, and parses it. Uh, there's been some uh, relatively recent changes uh, to the JSON structure of a couple reports that, uh, uh, that takes out the HTML and actually uh, properly nests the JSON uh, so to make it more consistent. Uh, it also will produce HTML output, and which is a little bit more human readable if you want to kind of surface it, uh, you know, well for people uh, who like reading things that aren't on a console. So here's an example of, uh, you know, best practices that are actually uh, looking good. Uh, and then finally, uh, Audit All has an option for using Twitter Bootstrap. Uh, regardless of what your opinions are of uh, Twitter Bootstrap, it is a system for styling. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. Um, but uh, it produces a, a summary along with some color coding, uh, just basic color coding. You know, green is good, red is bad. Um, you know, it gives, a, gives you that kind of executive summary right at the top. Here's everything that is good and bad, and then we'll actually iterate through those. You can navigate through the report. Uh, this is something that you can actually put in front of um, an end client or an end user, and, and uh, while they might not necessarily understand any, every single one of the recommendations, they do understand, it's like, hey, these things that are red, uh, that have low scores, these are probably things that should be addressed. So uh, site audit does try to do a lot of things. It doesn't try to fix everything. There's certain kinds of uh, scenarios where uh, it's, uh, I don't feel it's appropriate to get into, uh, such as doing kind of like a whack-a-mole, kind of like uh, you know, uh, looking for like a blacklisted, uh, you know, particular function name, for example, or um, a malicious username that is common in, say, something like Drupal Geddon. Uh, because uh, the best way to defeat that is to change the username. I'm not going to play that game. Therefore, it's, it doesn't make sense. But other modules can. Uh, so modules can implement uh, both checks and reports. The checks are just kind of like the uh, atomic, like a unit test, uh, checking for a particular thing. And then a report is a collection of those checks. Uh, there's documentation in the README, uh, and also, I mean, the module itself, uh, uh, there's abstract classes that you can just extend and should be relatively well documented. Um, if, you, if you'd like to, uh, you know, if you have a particular request or uh, if you want to know how to work with it, the, just go to the drupal.org issue queue or also, uh, you know, uh, provide a GitHub pull request if you are feeling so inclined. Uh, it's, the project's up, up in both places because uh, different people have different workflows. So uh, if you've written one, please, this is an open source community. Um, we all gain from working together, uh, you know, regardless of your context. Yes, we're all special snowflakes, but the probability is uh, if you've written a test for something, uh, it's, prob uh, it's probably applicable in a greater context. Please do share your checks and reports. Uh, honestly, dozens of organizations and individuals con have contributed to site audit over the years, and it's absolutely fantastic and has helped grow the, uh, grow the ecosystem. So please, be a good citizen and uh, share. So um, as uh, site audit development continues, uh, I've been very interested in uh, Drupal console, which is, the, uh, which is a Drupal 8 uh, command line interface. I've been working to uh, make a Drupal console version available. This doesn't mean the Drush version is dead. It just means that I'm uh, extending the, uh, uh, the availability of it and also making it a little bit less uh, tool, uh, tool specific. So um, event, the eventual goal is to have um, one on one feature parity, it just it, depending on how you run it. If you want to run it from Drush, it doesn't care. If you want to run it from Drupal Console, so but it is up and running. Um, I'm a human. Uh, if anybody has some uh, time that they want to help, uh, you know, by all means. <laughs>
So um, I, I mentioned that site audit can be uh, extended, and uh, actually there's a number of tools with site audit uh, support. Uh, you, don't, you can use it in conjunction with site audit, or you can use them as standalone tools, uh, both, uh, both of which are completely valid options. Uh, unused modules is an example of that. It is a system that does exactly that. It looks for uh, modules that have been uh, disabled uh, in the system, uh, well, either disabled or uninstalled that don't have any uh, uh, Right, don't have any uh, additional dependencies. For example, uh, views and views UI, uh, it won't give you a hard time about because uh, you can have views I, UI off, but views is actually active. So there is a dependency that is required and therefore uh, it's not going to tell you to uninstall views UI. Uh, so it, the nice thing about it is it can uh, help reduce the size of your code base, which just makes it easier either like if you have a build process, making that build process shorter, or if you're just maintaining this, you know, a single monolithic site, you know, less is more. It's easier to like not have to wade through things that aren't being used. Um, right, mentions that. Uh, security review, uh, another fantastic mo uh, module that uh, does, uh, you know, checks for site, uh, site and hosting configuration and also checks the site content uh, and actually like scans and gives you, you know, actionable recommendations. Uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, checking for PHP files uh, in the Drupal files directory, making sure that uh, the web server, no matter what it is, can't actually allow someone to execute that, which is a huge security vulnerability. Or checking for untrusted roles having uh, administrative or trusted Drupal permissions. So it surfaces those reports. Um, I, gen I should have checked this before this presentation. There is a uh, Drupal 8 version of security review. I don't know if it works with site audit. We'll find out. Hacked is another wonderful module. Uh, right now, there's only a Drupal 7 version. I don't. Uh, I, I think there's something in the issue queue for Drupal 8. Uh, but and actually, that screenshots from Drupal 6. Uh, so well, because that's that's their screenshot. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, what it does is it does a comparison between uh, the version of modules that you have installed on your site and the version that is available on Drupal.org. Why is this important? Well, uh, if you don't have your things in version control, uh, you should, and you would. You should feel bad if you don't, but if you don't, uh, it can actually do kind of a comparison and give you, uh, you know, at least a little bit of sense of certainty that, uh, you know, this code hasn't been modified. Also, and more commonly, you want to know whether or not someone has actually, you know, played around with the module, either patching it or just making an arbitrary change that next time you update the module will be wiped away and uh, bad things happen to your site. Um, sensitive data is actually uh, a brand new module that I found out uh, by sitting at the sprint table, uh, it's a, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, it, it is actually, to the, to the best of my knowledge, it is the first standalone site audit um, extension that isn't a module that I'm aware of. Uh, it searches content for sensitive information such as uh, credit cards or ID numbers. So it actually kind of uh, you know looks over the entire uh, basically every single piece of content and looks for uh, sensitive information then does a uh, more careful check to make sure, you know, make sure it, within PHP to, ch you know, check for known algorithms and it's continuing to be evolved. Uh, so check it out. I think it's cool. Um, cache audit. Uh, so site audit does audit caches and there's actually a fair amount of crossover between the two. Uh, but uh, so, uh, but it reports it in a much more granular way. So that it checks the ca uh, caching settings of Drupal core, block, and views, and panels. Now panels is different because uh, site audit does not actually audit panels. Uh, just didn't get around to it. Uh, and so uh, it's, a, it's a great tool and uh, provides some really cool recommendations. Um, so now we're going to start getting outside of uh, Drupal specific tools. This is uh, this is kind of related. Uh, PHP Code Sniffer is uh, a tool for uh, you know tokenizing your PHP code and uh, checking for coding standards and other types of uh, PHP standard violations. Uh, uh, the Coder Project, uh, which is on Drupal.org, um, you know, integrates with that and provides an, uh, rules that. Uh, or specific to Drupal. So uh, believe it or not, uh, no matter if you have a Drupal 7 or Drupal 8 version, use the Drupal 8 version of Coder uh, in conjunction with PHP Code Sniffer. That contains the latest and the greatest uh, uh, Drupal coding standards that will apply uh, to both 7 and 8. Um, and it contains uh, both Drupal and Drupal practice sniffs, uh, that, which are best practices. Uh, and yeah, detects uh, automatically detects deviations from Drupal coding standards. Um, I'll, I'll take a step back for a moment and say, whenever you use a tool like this on an existing code base, you are uh, 
unless you're a robot uh, or you're very good about setting up like something like editor config that enforces uh, you know tabs uh, tabs versus spaces or indentation or rules, you're going to get a lot of results. Don't try to fix them all at, all at the same time. It's a micro optimization. It makes everything really difficult to work with. Instead, you know, take kind of an incremental approach. Just clean up like whatever you're working on. Uh, you know, and over time, make the entire site better. But don't try to do it all at once. That's just it's not a that's not a useful use of anybody's time. Um, PowerReview.sh is actually, oh, I should have put this in a different section. Anyway, it's a hosted uh, utility that runs those, uh, runs Coder and actually runs some other utilities on contrib modules. Um, this is also part of the uh, module application process if you want to become a module maintainer and actually be able to post projects on Drupal.org. Uh, I think right now it is a hard requirement that you actually put your sandbox uh, module through this process and it provides you know automated reviews uh, so some php specific utilities uh, php copy paste detector uh, does well exactly that it looks for uh, large blocks of repeated code that you know, should probably be consolidated um, you know developers shouldn't be uh, held accountable for uh, you know, they should be delivering functionality, not necessarily like producing as many lines of code as possible. So this will help detect kind of weirdness. Uh, PHP mess detector also looks for, um, you know, just badly structured code or things like that have like really ridiculous kind of nesting and complexity to it. Um, you know, suboptimal code and, you know, uh, overcomplicated expressions or, you know, some possible bugs, which uh, there's crossover between this and some other tools. Uh, PHP lines of code, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, well, counts lines of code, but also, uh, you know, will uh, give you a report on, like, say, namespaces used, uh, for example, and give you just kind of an overall perspective into the site uh, and measures the size and structure of the site. Um, Git also has a wonderful history. So before I even like mention any tools, this is a you know this is a graph from a very real world site um, that uh, and uh, utilities such as uh, a hosted platform such as GitHub, for example, also will surface a, you know a view very similar to this. Um, when do you think that that uh, that site was really worked on and you know by an agency and then handed off to a single developer? Uh, there, you know, it, this helps tell a story. It's not the entire story. I mean, there's a lot more nuance in it, but it helps give perspective into what happened over the life cycle of a project, especially if you're adopting a site or you just want to know, like, what the heck happened to this over time? You know, this is one of the perspectives. So uh, Git Stats, which is on uh, GitHub, and Git Inspector uh, both produce kind of similar results. Uh, your, your mileage may vary. You know, take a look at the, uh, it'll also get into, like, uh, the activity of ind individual contributors so you know, you know whether or not like, oh, so and so uh, put a hundred thousand lines of code in the database or I I into the code base. Well, that's interesting. Um, was that needed? Uh, and then they re immediately removed a hundred thousand lines to the next commit. Oh, okay, that happens. Uh, so uh, JavaScript tools. Um, so uh, ESLint. Uh, this is actually um, you know, available from ESLint.org. There's a definition that is actually uh, within the. Uh, Drupal 8 core uh, that is, that actually similar to Coder uh, the uh, those standards and uh, uh, those standards and configuration apply both to seven and eight uh, but is a pluggable linting a, a utility for JavaScript so basically make sure you know does it function it, you know does it adhere to coding standards and, and best practices uh, there are other utilities that do something kind of similar uh, JSCS which is uh, JavaScript coding standards or code style rather. Um, does exactly that. Uh, JS Hint also uh, will get a little bit deeper and uh, detects errors and potential problems. Uh, there's a little bit of a community infighting about like what's better, ESLint or JS Hint, uh, and why don't they merge? Well, they take slightly different approaches. So um, those are both options. Um, Drupal 8 Core has an ES, uh, ESLint configuration, so take that as you may. Um, there's uh, also some utilities that are available that aren't necessarily installed on the platform uh, or the or whatever you're using, uh, such as webpagetest.org. It's a fantastic utility. Uh, will uh, does two requests. 
uh, you know, one after another. Uh, I can actually like do a request as a specific browser, for example, or a mobile device, which is wonderful. Uh, it'll, uh, you know, gives you, you know, some of the hallmarks of what I consider a good audit in which, you know, gives you like these, you know, really, uh, you know, a combination of like, this is, you know, F on a scale of like A, B, C, D, F. It's like, this is really bad or X, this doesn't apply. Um, and also, you know, the coloring to like really highlight, hey, this is bad. Um, but also, uh, you know, it gives you a sense of like whether, you know, how the caching configuration is working. Uh, you know, for example, like the first request, you know, uh, the, the, on this particular example, you know, 748, you know, K for the first time, second time, 111 K. Okay, cool. So at least a few things are caching. Uh, you know, it'd be better, you know, less is more, obviously, and the, you know, 700K is still kind of big. You know, how can we improve that over time? Uh, it also pr produces a, you know, wonderful water view, waterfall view and uh, a number of different, uh, and, and makes recommendations around the use of uh, CDNs and also, uh, you know, setting your cache timing uh, in an optimal manner. Uh, Google Page Insights actually has, uh, is a kind of a user-friendly version of this. Uh, it provides a number of the same recommendations, not necessarily with the same granularity, but uh, it's still a really important tool. And also, more importantly, uh, you know, these uh, actually does, you know, making this page happy it has this weird side effect of making your Google Page rank a little bit happier as well. So pay attention to this one as well. Um, and also, you know, uh, gives you like these uh, actionable recommendations uh, and also will uh, uh, surface, you know, problems like such as, okay, you're using this third party tool. Here's this caching uh, that should be applying to this third party tool that isn't there and you don't have direct control over that. That's, and it'll, it'll surface things like that and then you, then you talk with that vendor and say, hey, by the way, you really should be caching this, otherwise my site is slow and why, do I, why should I keep giving you money? Um, another utility um, that it, you know, does a different kind of analysis is the Wave Web Accessibility Tool. Uh, it's available at wave.webaim.org. Uh, this is actually uh, this, uh, this particular uh, session uh, did an analysis, so uh, it analyzes web pages for accessibility, you know, kind of best practices and, you know, how, uh, you know, checking to see, like, you know, do you have proper alt text, for example, like in this example, these don't. Um, and also provides you actual recommendations on what to do about that. Uh, accessibility is very important. You know, it's not only for, uh, you know, people who need uh, assistance accessing content, it also, uh, helps uh, you know, robots and crawlers actually you know, uh, consume the content of your site. Uh, and also it just produces a better structured experience overall if you can actually uh, uh, use some of these recommendations. Uh, the Qualsys SSL server test uh, does, does exactly that. Um, it looks at uh, your HPS configuration, uh, actually looks, looks at the certificates. Uh, in this particular case, it gets a giant F because uh, you know, this, this particular uh, site has a bad, uh, uh, has a known vulnerability in their certificate, and so it gives recommendations around that. Run it on your own site. Um, you know, this is actually, uh, you know, uh, this doesn't, making that an A doesn't mean your site is secure, it just means it's secure from these particular vectors at this time. You know, run it every once in a while, just make sure that you're up to date uh, uh, and using, uh, you know, the current recommendations. So, this is a lot of information. It can be kind of overwhelming and, if you, and it's really tempting, especially when you have tools that can produce pages and pages of content. You're just like, look at this, boom, I have delivered all this value to you. Done. Bye. Um, this isn't good, you know. So when you're actually like providing a report, uh, you know, even if you're just like uh, you know doing it for your own you know purposes, like you know have you know have some decency and actually kind of structure it a little bit. So uh, a decent report structure should have like just kind of like a brief overview of like what the scope and the requirements are. It's like okay, the scope is like hey, uh, we want to know how uh, how the site is, uh, what site is being uh, looked at, you know what portions of the site, you know, as who, like maybe as an editor, I want to go through these things, or as an anonymous user, I want to like look at the list of latest news, uh, and uh, what the requirements are for the project, uh, and also providing the actionable recommendations. Get to the point. What needs, what actually needs to be done? Don't baffle them with BS. Actually just tell them, it's like, hey, this is what needs to be done, or this is what I'm going to do or have done in order to rectify these problems. And then, you know, having the output from the tool is great, 
stick it in an appendix, stick it at the very end of it. So it's like, if you really want to check my work, if you want to know how to do it, uh, how to install these tools and do it yourself, because there's, uh, these are all open source or at least publicly available utilities. Don't hide that information, actually expose it to the client. Yes, this can be a little bit, um, a little bit dangerous if they get hyper fixated on a particular metric, but it at least gives them an opportunity to be able to understand how that, uh, you know, what, uh, how the changes that either you or their team is uh, making on the site, what impact that has, and also uh, help surface things and say, hey, by the way, people aren't going to your site because it's really heavy, and here's this tool that tells you how heavy your site is, and uh, you, can, you can see that for yourself. It's not just me saying it. Uh, and also, you know, provide the raw results uh, because you want to say, okay, hey, back in 2014, your front page, you know, downloaded 10 megs of resources. Now in 2016, 500K. Okay, fantastic. You know, you, you can see that change over time. It's also, uh, you know, if you run the same kinds of tests, uh, those, uh, the results of those tests, you can actually use that as a comparison. It's like, okay, Google PageSpeed Insights used to be 40, now it's 90. Okay, that's, that's a quantifiable difference, I can measure that. And if you don't actually store those results, you aren't able to make those comparisons. Um, one of the utilities that I recommend, uh, I mean, your mileage may vary, you can do it in all sorts of different ways, but Gitbook is an open source utility. It's also a commercial product, but, uh, you know, so, you know, use whatever you find uh, works for you. Um, but it's a book format and tool chain for using Git and Markdown. Uh, you know, Markdown is a, you know, simple text formatting syntax that you can use. Um, it's a command line tool uh, out of the box that uses Node.js. There's also, um, uh, there's actually GUI uh, tools available as well from Gitbook that will allow you to you use it as a what you see is what you get editor. So you can just paste content in and like, you know, just mark something as bold or uh, bulleted list and so forth. Um, it outputs HTML, uh, which is good, you know, if you want to like publish it as a uh, Publish it on like a GitHub page, for example, or hosted uh, as PDF. So uh, you know, lots of people like to have like, give me a full report. You know, it would be great if you have like basically a click of one button or just run a command line and just here's the PDF of everything, properly formatted, ebook formats if that's your thing, uh, and uh, other uh, and other formats. It's I find it incredibly useful for large structural reports. Uh, because uh, you can have, uh, basically it's like every section is a separate file. So restructuring a report is as simple as, uh, you know, just changing uh, either the indentation or uh, the order of a bulleted list. So uh, if you've ever tried to work with a 100 page document in say something like Google Docs or Microsoft Office or what have you, um, that can get a bit unwieldy. You're going to make mistakes, you know, copy and pasting. Versus, I'm just going to move this one bulleted list. I'm going to reverse the sequence, and suddenly the entire report is restructured. So um, uh, this is an example of using uh, the Atom open source editor. Uh, it works really well. It has a built-in markdown preview. Uh, it just works. You know, but honestly, this is just straight text. You can use Sublime or what have you to work on it. And uh, this is an example of uh, the Gitbook HTML format. Um, which, uh, you know, this is what, you know, uh, again, it's very similar to um, a number of hosted utilities. It's, it, as you can see, it lends itself well to documentation or well-structured reports. Um, uh, I will say, uh, just as a side note, I don't think Gitbook works really well for project documentation. I've tried it. It just, it's not really maintainable. There's better ways of doing it. But for, for reports uh, or for uh, hosted manual, Gitbook is fantastic. So a um, lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of things that can be done. I'm, I've mentioned like things like uh, Drupal console support. Uh, you know, the Drupal ecosystem is continuing to grow and evolve. Um, I'm one person, there's been like dozens of contributors over the years. I am looking for help if, uh, if anybody's interested. Uh, you know, basically, you know, submit an issue on drupal.org and let's talk. Like, uh, help is fantastic, you know, and uh, a team effort is better than uh, one person working on things. So if you're interested, submit an issue. So as a summary, Good configuration matters. Uh, this is a screenshot from a site that was hosted on Pantheon, uh, and uh, it's kind of dramatic. Um, got a complaint. Page is slow. Okay, what's to, you know what's going on? Did a you know did a quick look. Oh, your caching configuration is 
bad. Um, you know, just certain, uh, just like low-lying fruit, like you know, uh, anonymous page caching is turned off. You know, so Drupal is sending uncacheable headers, and so every request that comes in goes straight to the web server. Varnish isn't doing its job. And then, you know, flip the switch, and suddenly everything's fine. You know, thor throughput uh, requests per minute go way down because it's not going to the uh, you know, web server anymore. The app deck store goes way up. The, uh, you know, it, the time that it takes for the server to actually respond is lower because there's you know, less work that it has to do. Everybody wins. So that's it. Thank you very much for coming. I deeply appreciate it. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, we have a microphone set, set up over here. Uh, if you have a question, either, uh, yeah, please just go to it, and, uh, or I'll just repeat it. Can you put, test, test, is this on? Can you post the slides? I, I'm pardon? Can you post the slides? Can I post the slides? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's a, oh, well, that, um, yeah, the slides will be posted on uh, Drupal.org. They're also on uh, GitHub, and uh, yeah, absolutely. So have you uh, run into people using tools like Site Audit to do uh, regular monitoring, and, and where do you like to draw the line between auditing and monitoring? Um, I, well, in, in some ways, yes. I mean, uh, Pantheon Launch Check is actually a form of monitoring. I mean, you know, it runs once an hour and actually gives you those recommendations. Uh, I'm not aware of any tool that, uh, similar to Acquia Insights, you know, keeps track of those changes over time. Uh, that's been something that I've intended to build, but just haven't, just time. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, especially with a structured JSON output, there's no reason why you couldn't actually run those, uh, run those reports on a regular basis and put it into an aggregation tool such as Splunk, for example. Hey John, so uh, when you talk about why to do the sites audit, um, do you think that you, you don't have the point of how this affects the end users? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's like no part of the why? So what is, what is your, your opinion? What, like why is that not you know, explicitly said in the, in the presentation? Because I think if you have, you have the need to do an audit and you're gonna put resources on that, mm -hmm. you need to explain to you know, the, the, you, I guess your team or your supervisor, the people that's gonna be involved in that, that's gonna be a lot of effort. And especially for the business people, they will need to understand why they need to invest on something like this. Oh, clear. Yeah. Well, and part, uh, you know, and part of the reason for doing an audit is, you know, some of it is to, uh, you know, determine, uh, you know, uh, you know, is there a problem? You know, what kind of problems there are, and what kinds of impact it will have on on users. For example, site performance is, uh, you know, uh, you know, very very important to users. People who uh, have difficulty accessing a site. Um, you know, or if it's too expensive to access a site, you know, for example, if you're in an area using a, you know, a, a limited mobile plan, for example, uh, and there is a literal cost associated for each page view. If it's going to cost you $5 to look at the front page of a site, you're probably not going to go to it or you're only going to do it once. Um, so, you know, right there, it's like you're going to increase uh, your site audience if you make the site more accessible. And some of that is based on uh, performance or page size. Um, the uh, you know being able to put a direct monetary value on that is kind of difficult, um, but uh, if you have uh, utilities such as you know something like Google Analytics uh, or SiteGround that is actually paying attention to the site traffic, and you say it's like well when uh, site performance is down, the, the number of users has gone down, and when site performance is increased, the the amount of participation or involvement or you know the depth of content that they actually you know the time that it uh, takes for them to bounce from the site, it increases, then that's, that is one way to measure the impact on an audience. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much, and thank you for, <laughs> thank you for coming. Uh, please give feedback. Um, that's a link to uh, the, uh, I'll post the slides there shortly, but uh, 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 yeah, the Drupal Association would like feedback on these sessions, so thank you. Sorry, uh, one more question. Oh, uh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Is uh, site audit dependent on the Pantheon launch check, or can I use it in my own uh, environment? No, launch check is, uh, the Drupal launch check is dependent on site audit, uh, not the other way around. All right. So, oh yeah, you can install it anywhere. Uh, there's support for Pantheon. Or, I'm sorry, there's support for uh, Acquia. Uh, there's, uh, no, there's not support for platform.sh yet, but yeah, you can install it anywhere. It's completely open source and you can install it anywhere. 
Uh, yeah, it's platform agnostic, which is fun. <laughs> cool.